Welcome everyone. I'm really excited. My name is Rabbi David Mason. I'm one of the four rabbis, five rabbis, I should say, who um, are at the helm of Eco Synagogue. And I'm really excited to be able to welcome all of you here uh, from across the Jewish community to our event, Action on Climate Change, Taking uh, uh, the Community Forward. Uh, and I'm really excited that we are, of course, doing this with the Board of Deputies um, and with rabbis from across the denominations of our community. And that's really, really important. And I think um, it is amazing what's happening across the community. It's amazing what's happening across the denominations of our community. And we at Eco Synagogue very much feel that we are at the vanguard of this work. We very much feel excited and passionate about moving our community forward uh, and, and building a greater climate consciousness uh, through working with our synagogues and our organizations as well and building local activists and synagogues that consider how they are um, and how sustainable and energy efficient they can be. And so that's really, I'm really pleased to say, impacted on the work that's going on across the community. And that's really, really great. And we're really happy also that we've been able to expand only just recently to bring on Rabbi Jeff Berger for, from the SNP, the, um, the Spanish and Portuguese communities. And I'm really, really pleased that we, we've got Rabbi Berger in as well. And of course, tonight, tomorrow is Tu Bishvat which we felt was an apt day to think about climate consciousness, the depth of conversations that we can have about protecting our planet, protecting nature and protecting the community. It offers up some really, really great values. Today, the 15th of Shvat, the Mishnah, that old Jewish text talks about today, tonight and tomorrow, as the Rosh Hashanah Ilanot, the new year for trees. And in some ways, it's where there is a meeting place between religion and its laws and its customs and its ideas and the world of nature. The idea that we consider a date after which we almost begin a new tax year, tithing year, for the fruit that comes from the tree, where law meets nature. And we often think about tshuva, repentance or reflection even, or return as a concept related to religion, to a person, to people. But there's also a return to the land itself. And Tu Bishvat is very much about returning to the land. When we were at COP as Eco Synagogue, and we were really proud that we had a place at COP26 um, and did some great work there. I remember Rabbi Tanya talking about thinking of a word for na nature consciousness. Now, whatever the Hebrew word is that we can discuss, and that's one of the things we love to do at Eco Synagogue, um, the idea of nature consciousness, being conscious about nature, is also connected to a sense of God consciousness. It's God that created nature. It's God that gifted us this world. It's God that deposited this world and the climate and the planet for us to protect. And therefore, Tu Bishvat almost gives us a sense of talking about not just a consciousness of God or person or religion, but also a consciousness of nature as well. And I'm really, really proud to work with my colleagues and with Andrea Pass, with Angelina, um, and all those involved in uh, Eco Synagogue, along with, of course, the Board of Deputies, to bring that consciousness, that continued reflection on protecting God's nature to the wider Jewish community. So with that, I'm going to hold up, hand over to Rabbi Jonathan Wittenberg um, to introduce our speaker and, and um, take you into our event today. Thank you, everyone. Thank, 
Thank you, Rabbi David Mason. And one of the huge joys of Eco Synagogue is working across the community with colleagues in all parts of that. And I'm very, I'm very moved by that sense of nature consciousness and God consciousness and the sense of tshuva to our relationship with the earth and with the land. JPR, the Institute for Jewish Policy Research, recently conducted an important piece of investigation into attitudes to climate across the community. And we felt that a very, very good launching point for tonight was to understand better how that research was conducted and what its results were. And so in a moment, I'm going to welcome Carly Lesoff, Senior Research Fellow at JPR, to present her research. And that will be followed by a conversation which will engage different sectors of the community, the denominations, but also the charitable sector and the corporate sector, and in looking at, well, what do we take from this research? How can it increase our activism? What David said, Rabbi David Mason just said, building activists and building climate consciousness. So those will be the next parts of this evening event. Um, people are welcome to put, particularly during, the, during the, the, the conversation after the presentation, people are welcome to put questions in the chat or comments in the chat. We'll try to take note of them tonight, but certainly all of us will be taking note of them in the future and learning from them. So can I welcome, uh, welcome you, Carly, Carly, Carly Lesoff, Senior Research Fellow at JPR. And I know you're going to present some, you're going to share your screen and present some of your search, and we're going to talk about it afterwards. But first of all, can I ask you, what motivated JPR to see this as an important issue into which to conduct this research? Well, it, it's just so important. I mean, I read something uh, a couple of days ago which said that the Jewish community should be treating this as importantly uh, as an issue as important as anti-Semitism. I mean, it, it's very interesting to know how this uh, issue is held in the Jewish community. Is it important? Isn't it? And there's never been any research about climate change in uh, uh, in the Jewish community in Britain. Um, and we thought it was important to establish a benchmark just a few questions to understand what people's views are now so that over time we can track change and we can provide a kind of evidence base for people who care about this issue to understand where we should be addressing attention, what, what needs to change and so on. Thank you. And that's really important to us as we want to change people's attitudes to understand where the challenges might really lie and how we can go about them. So with those thoughts in mind, can I invite you to present your research, please? Absolutely. I'll just try and share my screen. If you could just confirm. Can you see my yes, screen? Yes, we can see. We can see. Fantastic. So um, the piece of work I'm about to present uh, was a collaboration at JPR and that was co-authored with my colleagues David Graham and John Boyd and if you want to download the research it's available on the JPR website and it's actually in, in the invitation and I can only got time to give you a few of the sort of top line findings um, but nevertheless I'll try and give you a flavour of what we found. Um, you may be aware that uh, JPR has a research panel. When the pandemic started we realised it was incredibly important to be able to understand uh, what was happening in the community. Um, and so we did a survey where we asked uh, about all kinds of things, the impact of COVID-19 on relationships and work and health and Jewish life. Um, and then we repeated in the summer 2021, we went back to people, about 4,000 people, and we asked these questions again. And this time we asked some extra attitude questions about Israel and Gaza, about politics and Brexit, and about climate change. We only had space to ask four questions. So I apologize that this is very brief, but basically we asked, do you think the world's climate is changing? Do you think that climate change is caused by natural processes, human activity, or both? How worried are you about climate change? And to what extent do you feel a personal responsibility to try to reduce climate change. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, just those four questions. We took the questions from something called the European Social Survey, which is a very established survey. Um, and these questions were asked a long time ago, 2016. So I'm just going to run through each of the questions in turn and give you the top line. So do Jewish people think the world's climate is changing? 
92% agree that it is, 69% uh, that it was definitely changing, and the others said probably changing. And then we've got about 8% who either are very skeptical, they think it's probably or definitely not changing, and about 4% who, who just don't know or don't want to say. So that's the answer to that question. The second was, do you think that climate change is caused by natural processes, human activity, or both? And we found that 63% of Jewish people said climate change is entirely or mainly caused by human activity, with just 13% saying it's entirely caused by human activity. And then about another quarter say it's a bit of both. And then we've got a, a, a remaining 13% or so who either say that they think it's caused by natural causes or natural processes or who don't know or don't want to say. The third question about how worried you are about climate change, this time 78% said they would express some worry. Now you might say that's good, you might say that's bad, it's hard to decide what's a kind of reasonable level of worry. But if you're somebody who thinks that there is a climate crisis, um, then you should be aware that only 17% of the Jewish community at the moment say that they are extremely worried, which maybe is an indicator of people who would say it might be a climate crisis. And then the remainder say they're not worried, not at all worried, or they're not sure. So the last question is that I think the most interesting one, and it's to what extent do you feel a personal responsibility to try to reduce climate change? And here people were given a choice from zero, which means that they not at all, they don't feel at all responsible, to 10, which was a great deal of responsibility. And overall, three quarters of Jews scored six or higher, so above the middle. Um, and in fact, the mean for the population who responded was 6.6. .6. But what's interesting here is how it varies. Uh, it's not surprising to say that attitudes, these attitudes, these four questions correlate with each other, they're associated with each other. If you're in the group of people who say the climate is definitely changing, your group scored on average 7.4 for personal responsibility. Probably changing 5.5, probably not changing 3.7, definitely not changing 0.4. So you can see that there, there is a range of views and your sense of responsibility varies according to your, your commit, your belief in climate change. And the same is true for whether you think it's entirely, mainly uh, human activity or natural activity. It, one, one attitude is strongly associated with the other. And again, the same is true with whether you're extremely worried, somewhat worried, not at all worried. And I think that's important because my uh, belief is, this is not evidenced, but that if you feel a personal responsibility to reduce climate change, you're more likely to be acting and feeling resp responsible is associated with these other other attitudes. So I think it's very important people keep having the argument and keep discussing. So, so yeah, one... this is digging deeper then. Who are these people and are there key differences in age or gender or religious affiliation or other factors that lead people to have certain kinds of views? Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan. That's exactly what I, I, I'd like to share with you now. There are very important variations. Uh, women are slightly more likely to be uh, concerned about the climate. Younger people also, but not quite as dramatically as you might expect. Certainly our, our young people are amongst our climate activists, but there's a variation amongst young people. Those two factors are important. Economic situation is very important. People who are struggling financially are less concerned about the climate. They have other priorities in their life, perhaps. There's a very strong difference according to whether people have a degree or not. So people with a degree are more concerned about the climate than people without a degree. Now, all of those are important, but not nearly as important as two other factors. A very sp strong issue is political affiliation. And I can come back with more detail if you want, but very crudely, there is a, a right to left variation. So if you are a conservative voter, you are much less likely to uh, have positive climate 
change attitudes, or perhaps to see yourself as aligned with climate activism, which perhaps isn't quite the same thing. And similarly, there's a big difference around denomination. So liberal reform and Masorti Jews are more climate positive, uh, non-members somewhere in between, uh, s &P, not far away actually, and then the United Synagogue, and then actually quite substantially less uh, conscious of the climate, either because there isn't the concern there or not the awareness there in the strictly orthodox community. So those are the main differences. So I was, I'm, going to, I'm going to draw to a close now so that you have time for discussion. But essentially, I've drawn attention to this relationship between these different attitudes and how they're driving personal responsibility. There are a lot of different variation things, factors driving differences in attitudes. Party affiliation and denomination are the strongest. And one thing I didn't, maybe we could have a, a moment to talk about this, but Judaism has a funny place in all of this. Um, you'd think that religiosity would drive greater climate awareness. And actually it operates in a strange way because amongst liberal and reformed Jews, greater religiosity leads to a stronger sense of climate consciousness. But amongst strictly orthodox Jewish people, greater religiosity actually is associated with lower climate awareness. Uh, so it's quite complicated. Um, but these are just some benchmark findings, a starting point, um, hopefully to provide evidence for the debate. Thank you, Carly. There was one very interesting comment, several interesting comments in the chat, but also some that I had. First of all, there was a question about comparative studies. Do you know how this compares to studies in the states, in the Jewish community, or indeed in other faith communities? Are we similar to other faith communities? Are we typical of the population in general, or are we more or less sort of climate crisis conscious? So um, I'm not an expert in this area, but broadly speaking, it looks as if the Jewish community in Britain is a little bit more climate positive than the general population. But I think that's largely driven by differences in our composition, uh, you know, a, a, a more uh, socioeconomically advantaged population, for example. In comparison with other religious groups, the general finding is that religion doesn't drive more climate awareness. Slightly unexpectedly, um, there isn't a, a complete correlation between religiosity and climate awareness that you might expect. I wonder then whether there's something we have to learn and we're failing here to teach in the way that we could. I think that, um, I mean, I could just, I could just share with you a little bit more um, about the difference in the Jewish community in terms of denomination. Uh, for example, if we look at who says the world, the climate is definitely changing you can see there is a gradient across the community. And similarly, the second uh, row here shows you whether it, people believe it's entirely or mainly caused by human activity. I think the important thing is not to see this as a way of um, denigrating any part of the community, but just to acknowledge that different parts of the community are in different places. Um, for example, in perhaps the climate discussions have been happening on the bimmer of reform, liberal, Mazzotti synagogues more than they have been in other shuls. I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm nervous of over explaining things because I don't have the research, but um, I think that the important thing is to understand where each community is and to support that community in thinking about how, what is relevant, how might it shift, its, uh, increase the conversation in its own community. And of course, and that's, all... yeah, that's where we're going to go very shortly. And there's some fabulous initiatives across the denominations, um, which, 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 will come, which will be talked about shortly. Can I ask you something? Were you able to press on the question, what does, you know, do you feel responsible? What does actually responsibility mean? It's something I'm going to ask people in the conversation to come, but were you able to take that question forward? Did you get a sense for from your research as to 
OK, then, so what do people mean by it? No, we didn't. Unfortunately, I'd love to do some more research about what that is and also maybe some research about what it what people feel about the climate movement, because I think perhaps some parts of the Jewish community uh, feel less affinity for it. And there's work to do there. But whether or not it means I mean, there's so many things it could mean. Does it mean uh, responsibility uh, to change your own personal behavior? Um, does it mean to be part of a kahila to to be an activist to to press uh, politically or to press corporate organizations but no i'm afraid at this point in time i don't have good research evidence to support your debate i wish we did well i hope we'll be able to take that we're going to bring you back after we've had a wider conversation carly to ask what what sort of comments and what perhaps future directions in research that might prompt but thank you and thank you to jpr for undertaking this research which is going to guide us now in in our work ahead as eco synagogue and in all the different sectors of the jewish community That's so great um thank so you. thank you and we're bringing you back shortly i want to welcome we've got quite a panel a very a very rich and skilled panel of people who are deeply involved many of them for many years in this area so i want to welcome naomi verber and rafi adelston andrea pass um ian lancaster rabbi tanya sankovich laura hendy and Andrew Lee from the Board of Deputies, our partner in this, if you'd join me and uh, we're going to, um, and uh, Carly, if you could kindly unscreen share Sorry. and um, we're just for a little bit and we're going to, we're, we're going to be talking together. And what I'm hoping to do is manage this as a conversation. So I'm, so there's so much more that everybody has to say, and we're looking forward to a future event in which different organizations can present their plans and their strategies and their hopes much more fully in two or three months time. So this is kind of a taster and a, and a provoker. And I'm going to introduce people on the panel, um, one you know each in turn and not necessarily ask everybody exactly the same questions so laura first of all um you were formerly a chief executive at our carbon and now you're sustainability officer at world jewish relief um which is about to have a superb kind of mission statement on its work on climate and 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 resilience um first of all can i just ask you um Clearly, World Jewish Relief thinks this issue is really important or it wouldn't have appointed a full time person like yourself. Why is it so important in the charitable sector? Hi, thank you. Um, very good question. I think for us, we see climate change as something that we have a Jewish and a humanitarian imperative to be doing everything that we can on. Um, it's unavoidable now that climate change is one of the most important factors impacting the world's most vulnerable people um, and we can no longer afford um, as well Jewish Relief or as any international humanitarian charity to simply support people with poverty reduction or responding to disasters like floods and droughts without recognizing that all of this is getting a lot worse and we need to understand how the climate is changing and help people prepare for that. Um, so yeah I think the field that we work in has changed and we have to change with it. And that's going to impact on, I guess, it's going to be integrated into all the work and all the giving that, that, that you do. Um, thank you. Going to come back to you shortly. Um, <clears throat> Andrea, Andrea Pass, you're really project manager. In effect, I, I want to say on behalf of all the rabbis, you're effectively CEO of Eco Synagogue. And we're very, very grateful. We're very, very grateful to you. That question about what responsibility means, what it ought to mean. Can I ask you? how as eco synagogue you're directing it to sort of enable us to take responsibility what are the key features of its work in your eyes andrea if you're you're um, muted still there we are yes yeah, sorry i was telling everybody else to make sure they were unmuted i forgot uh, thank you so um the eco synagogue project is very special and the reason it's special is because it's taken responsibility for moving the whole community forward in terms of sustainability and improving our worship spaces and their ability to reduce their carbon and giving them measurable and tangible ways in order for them to do so. That responsibility, um, it works in two ways really. On the internally, we have five amazing rabbis and those rabbis take forward the 
the project into, into their own communities and encourage the responsibility to be spread there. And externally, collectively, we then present a collective Jewish response to um, the outside world. I think that, 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 yeah, that's the responsibility we have is to push that forward and also to provide, to be an umbrella for everything that's going on within the Jewish community to allow other people's voices to be heard so we can work collectively and much stronger. I think Rabbi Tanya has got something there. Yeah, like and to... I'm going to pick up in a moment, just with a prior warning to you, Andrew, from the Board of Deputies, that, that question of collectively and the whole community. But Rabbi Tanya. Just very briefly, I wanted to summarize it by saying, good evening, everyone, by saying Eco Synagogue, I think, is like eco hub of the Jewish community in our country. It's, it's like a collective eco conscience of the Jewish community in the United Kingdom. And that's what Rabbi David spoke about as the collective, the collective conscience of the Jewish community. Collective, the Board of Deputies, your operations director, recently appointed Andrew Andrew Lee um, for the Board of Deputies. You've backed, partnered and nurtured Eco Synagogue from the start. Can I ask you why that's so important to the Board of Deputies and also how you want to use your cross communal kind of record and authority to advance the sense of the importance of this issue? Thank you. Um, yes, the Board of Deputies, as, as you quite rightly say, has, has uh, nurtured right from the start Eco Synagogue. I mean, it is the Board of Deputies is the um, democratically elected, democratically and democratically accountable, I suppose, to the to the community. It's the voice and projects to the government and to other areas within the wider society. And um, it's now uh, taken on board the importance of uh, not only just in, t in relation to uh, uh, focusing on synagogues, but also itself. So the HOs, the leadership of the uh, of the democratically leadership democratic leadership of the of the board of deputies, has chosen to um, adapt the uh, eco synagogue audit for organisations, and the board of deputies will be. Uh, the first, probably the first organisation to undergo, under, undertake that audit. Uh, leadership is by leadership, by example, um, where we tread, others hopefully will then follow. That's pretty, I guess, environment like charity starts at home and we all need to take that really, that really seriously. The support of the Board of Deputies has been really core to the development of Eco Synagogue. So I just want to express a thank you. Um, and I'm going to come to you, to Naomi, Naomi, Naomi Verba with a big background in management consultancy you're head of environmental policy at the united synagogue and um i'm aware i think lots of us are aware through the jewish chronicle through the chief rabbi Ephraim mervis's um piece in it of the very very important significant project that's been that's been launched and at which you're at the helm so that that sense what should personal responsibility or communal responsibility mean to a synagogue and to its members in your eyes you're going to have time to later down the line for a fuller presentation but just just the headlines sure uh, thank you for inviting me um, um we're, we're delighted to, to be partaking this evening as the united synagogue um so so what does um communal responsibility mean and individual responsibility mean from united synagogue perspective well a lot um from a communal perspective, um, the work that was done by the Institute of Jewish Policy Research really honed into us how important it was to respond in terms of the United Synagogue community to the environmental crisis. Their, their research showed that within the United Synagogue members, it was over 60% were concerned or very concerned about the environmental crisis and more than seven out of 10 um, wanted to take action on it. So that, that gave us a mandate, if you like to say, this is important. And we know our members find this very important. Um, so communally, we have the size and the scale and the resources to do a lot across a large number of organizations. So the, the, the um, approach we've taken has very much been based on the Eco Synagogue foundational work you did with the audit. You kind of showed us how to approach all parts of communal life, how you, you know how you use your building, how what you eat, what you talk about, how you educate, etc. And we built seven projects around that for our first year. So that's the sort of communal element of it. And we, Dorot is being rolled out across all our communities. We're sort of um, tackling each project together in a stage plan over a, over a year. 
So there's very much a sense of we're starting this together, we're going to progress together through it, we're going to feedback together through it, and we want to work throughout with EK Synagogue um, to, to roll out these projects. And then from an individual perspective, this is not just about sort of, you know, head office, making policy that shawls or, or employees need to follow. We want to partner with our communities, our rabbis, our rabbisons, our employees throughout to understand, okay, where, how does this really relate to you? What do you want to do more of? What are the difficult things? Where are the challenges going to be? And we've spent probably the, the major, time, major part of the last three months has not been coming up with the projects or the practicalities, but consulting with people and understanding how is this going to work realistically? Um, and how can we make sure that we're partnering the whole way through? This is not thank enforced, but something you actually want to do and can sustain. How that, thank you. And we're hoping there'll be a chance to come back to everybody with one more question while we still have time. But Ra Rafi, that question, how is this going to work realistically? You're in the corporate sector. You've worked for 10 years um, in Deloitte as a sustainability lead. And um, I've appreciated the fact that you've been quite challenging on this issue. Greta Thunberg said of COP26, you know, all talk, no action. Do you think we need real specific targets? Do you think we need to be much more focused? This is where we've got to get to and we've got to say that as a community sort of a bit more loudly. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I definitely. We've lost you for a second, Rafi. Or maybe it's me. Uh, unlike other topics, other sorts of sounds me. Can you hear me? I'll yeah, we can now. Yeah. Um, unlike other social, yeah, great. Unlike other social justice topics, climate change is is it's quite easy to measure your success, right? Um, knowing, being able to count the amount of emissions that you're able to reduce is a tangible impact that you can make, and um, being able to do that is within our gift as a society and as a community, and being challenged, challenging ourselves to uh, be true lights into the nations, to um, be uh, architect leaders in this agenda um, takes courage um, and requires us to think big about what our impact can be and of course starting with our own backyard and how we operate our own organizations and institutions is a starting point but what more can we do to engage Jewish the Jewish our Jewish community people in our community who you know have great power as individuals and as a community how can we how can we really take a, a, a shining light and become um, pioneers um, in this domain I think we have that opportunity. I really uh, appreciate together. that. And one of the things I'm looking at in my own community is how can we turn the work we've done on the audit into a strategy and say, this is where we need to be in one year, in three years, in five years. I think, I, I think that is really, really important. I'm turning to you last uh, here right now, but absolutely not least, Ian Lancaster. And you have the environment portfolio for, for Reform Judaism. And I just want to recognize that we owe to you, I think one of the real pioneers at the Board of Deputies was Aubrey Rose and the, pioneer, the pioneering rabbi above all is Rabbi Jeffrey Newman. So, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for to Reform Judaism. Can I ask you, you've wanted as an organization to affiliate with Eco Synagogue. Why is that so important to you? Um, we take the view that, that there are three components to what we as a movement, we as a, a representative, representative organization need to be doing. And one of the things we need to be doing is setting a lead. We need to set an example for our members. So we're trying to be as an organ as an organization, as, as green as we can be, slow but steady. Uh, we wish to be a part of Eco Synagogue because we want to show our members that they should also be part of Eco Synagogue. We want to encourage our members uh, to recognize the issue and to act on the issue. But also, I think it's important that as a, a synagogal, uh, synagogal representative organization, we, we give them the um, religious underlying rationale for why this is important. I mean, we, you know, we, we all know it's, sorry, we all know JPR has just shown us that a significant percentage of Jews in this country know that climate change is a significant factor. Um, but it's worth us setting out the, the progressive Judaic rationale for, for why we need to be taking steps, starting, of course, with the extremely well-known phrase, tikkun olam. Thank you. And actually, that one of the questions which 
I think, Carly, maybe you'll comment back on this at the end or just in about five minutes or so. Is where's the Jewish in this? If that's not if that's not as big a motivator as whether as how people vote in general elections, something hurts me as a rabbi to hear that. But clearly, we have to recognise its importance and perhaps be, be 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 doing something be doing something about it. Setting a lead has come up in what several people have said. So I I, I want to come back to maybe I don't know whether it's you, Andrea, or Rabbi Rabbi Tanya here to say setting a lead in eco synagogue how can the this overarching organization help us set a lead well eco synagogue has a really unique place uh, within the jewish community exactly because of this united voice and at the moment we have five rabbis representing five movements and that idea of unity on the one hand as the united jewish voice gives us strength but at the same time each of the rabbis, supported by their movements, try to encourage communities within each of the movements and provide tools for the movement, for the communities to get engaged with eco questions. We are raising awareness within five different movements. And I think that gives us power within each denomination of our, of, of our Jewish community. And that's where our power lies, by in encouraging our colleagues, by doing work together, not only as a united Jewish voice, but separately in each movement as well. So it's a grassroots work, but also is a work as a Jewish community together. Thank you. And um, Rabbi Jeffrey Berger, who we had a conversation on Friday, just before Shabbat, and um, you've just joined the Eco Synagogue Rab Rabbinic team, and you reminded me that you reminded the phrase "akinat sofrim," which is kind of, let me put it gently, being inspired by the good work that each other does to try and do the same ourselves. And we can see that in the different steps, different movements take. And I'm hoping that this will be a process of collaborative learning and sharing of ideas, good practice, and good suggestions. But this is synagogues bit, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask two more people questions. I'm not gonna get back to everybody because I think as the different sort of rabbis and movements, we're looking at an event maybe two to three months down the line where we can present our programs in much more in much more depth to Dorot and what the other movements are doing. So I'm just gonna come back to Laura and Rafi, who are representing the charitable and the corporate sector. Um, can I ask you, Laura? the the work of world jewish relief is that a kind of trend setting work in the charitable sector because you didn't necessarily you know one might have said a charity appointing a sustainability officer is that now is that trend setting in the world of charities is that what tier fund and uh CAFOD and others are doing as well yeah thank you for your question um i think it's definitely where all of the charitable sectors are going and i don't think um we are necessarily setting the trend. I think some of the larger um, international charities are ahead of us um, in terms of having a much bigger focus on the environment. I think also the sort of charity sector when you work abroad is divided slightly into the longer term development charities that work on reducing poverty and strengthening people's livelihoods. Um, and then the charities that maybe come in and respond when there's been a disaster. So the humanitarian um, sector. But now that we have um, an issue like climate change, which is affecting long-term societal development, um, as well as causing a lot more disasters, those two sort of groups are coming together um, and climate and the environment are right at the forefront of both and they're bringing them together. So it's very much a trend, very much where all of the charities are focusing on. And it's good that the Jewish community then is part of it and we appreciate World Jewish Relief's work. Thank you. Rafi, I want to come back to you, um, hoping you can you can hear this, but you're from the corporate sector. And one of the parts of the vision is, you know, is that all parts of the Jewish community have an agenda and a strategy and goals in this area. The synagogal community, the religious community, the charitable community, the corporate community. And one of the big issues here is is investment. Um, a very key moment at COP when uh, there was a plea from uh, a Christian minister in the South Pacific, be my brother, help me. And I asked what that means. And he said, it's where you invest or don't invest. How do you see the corporate success se um, sector and in a way where w w what Jews invest in and yeah. in business world coming along on this agenda? Where, where your, your audio is sort of flickering a little bit, uh, Rafi. There's a, there's a spectrum of different you know, options as to how you can um, think about the role of investment when it comes to driving 
um, change in a space. You know, can, do you want to just cut off your investment to oil and gas majors? Do you want to, at the end of the extre- extreme, invest in disruptive startups in the climate tech? And you know, there isn't no one right answer. I think important thing is to think carefully about how you think your um, your your power can be de- deployed. Um, some people argue that you know, the best thing to do is to engage with the biggest um, uh, emitters and to engage them by being shareholders in those companies. You are then able to be activists um, to try and uh, make them you know, change faster. So there's no one route, there's no one hard and fast rule for how to deploy the power of capital for climate change. The important thing is that this is um, as per the research that we've started this conversation about. This is about raising awareness, raising um, the 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 heat <laughs> of the issue um, amongst you know your network. Um, and finance is a part of that. Thank you. And one of the things, um, a number of us, Rabbi Mason, a number of us are friendly with um, with Andy Atkins, who's one of the leaders in the Christian world here. And he said, the task of religion is to hold the feet to the fire, to keep the pressure up, particularly he was thinking of our lobbying capacity as, um, as, as, as faiths. Um, so, Carly, I just want to come back to you and ask you, you know, for a minute or two, do you want to just comment on what you've heard? Will that um, will that help with future research? Do you want to? Is there something you want to tell us all that we have not taken note of in what you've said, for example? Well, it's it's all super interesting, and I'm looking forward to listening back and processing because ultimately, when you, you asked earlier, you know, we were talking just briefly about whether or not more research is needed and what we could do and so on. Ultimately, what we need to do is understand what. Is going to be useful to the community community what needs to be known what more do we need to understand um and we need to respond to comments of these kinds and to think harder about uh how we can feed in as your work progresses um i mentioned earlier that we um we these are just four questions that we've asked and hopefully they'll be useful but they're just benchmarks and we should follow uh, in time and ask again and see if things have changed. But we only asked about attitudes. We didn't ask anything about behaviors, for example. And maybe it's useful to understand. um, We haven't asked about behaviors in reference to this kind of thing since the mid 1990s. Apparently, we did do some work then about behaviors. Um, Perhaps it will be useful for us to find out whether or not people are aware of these initiatives that the communities are developing. So in time, I mean, the work in Dorot and the work of all the different communities, perhaps in time, we'll be able to find out whether the Jewish community is responding. Or more fundamentally, you are you are expressing some dismay that that Judaism maybe is not driving, driving uh, change or not driving people's attitude. Maybe what we need to think about is what are the most meaningful messages to the community? what is it about climate change that does is meaningful to people from across the different religious denominations is it for example the security risk to israel if climate change continues or the innovation in you know what is it so i haven't fully processed all the interesting things that have been said um, and how we can help more, but ultimately we're in responsive mode. We we will listen to what you are, uh, you as the community leaders and change makers, what is useful to you, and then we will try and respond to that in time. Thank you, and you can also hold us to the mark by saying you've done research in two years time and we failed to make a difference, God forbid. So I think we, we need you. Um, we need to be guided by the questions that you ask and by the responses that you receive. I've got a couple of minutes to sort of comment on this panel conversation before we before we move on, because it is too beschwat to something about jay tree and tree planting, which I know is part of, first of all, it's a lovely thing to do, but it's part of, I think, every synagogue and every denomination and every gardener's dream. First of all, I want to apologise. I found it hard to sort of read the chat and follow the conversations and guide them. So there's a lot in the chat that we'll try and respond to in future. I also want to say that there's a sector we don't have here, which is very important, which is schools, Um, Jewish schools and other schools which pupils attend and are part of. And many young Jewish school students are leaders in persuading their schools to have 
a very engaged environment policy. So that's another part of what we what we want to look at. I also want to say that we'll look at a future event, like I said, two or three months down the line, with a much fuller presentation of programs that synagogues and um, denominations are are undertaking. But one of the things I want to highlight here is the bringing together of different sectors of the community and their different disciplines, the charitable, the corporate, the synagogal, the school, the educative, and, and how we can learn from each other, inspire each other, and move forward together because this issue is urgent. And for many of us, it's become one of the driving passions of our, of our lives. For me, that when you say, Vashinantam Levanecha, in the Shema every day, you shall teach them to your children. If I don't leave my children, if I don't need my utmost to leave the children a livable, sustainable, bio-rich, beautiful world, what Torah am I teaching my children? So it's an absolute driver here. The last dimension I want to add is the international one. Eco Synagogue has been approached by communities as far away as Australia, also Israel, also contacts with America, with Chazon, the excellent environmental movement there. Just in the last few days, Green Shabbat in Germany. So the more we can learn from each other and take things forward and be embracing in our approach, in my view, the better. There are many questions out there. I won't say we'll leave it there. We'll look at them, be provoked by them, and take as much as we can forward. Um, there's going to be now, because it is Tu B'Shvat, the birthday of the trees. I am a tree-hugging person. There's going to be a presentation from jtree.global and then uh, some words of conclusion by Rabbi Jeffrey Berger. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I, uh, JTree is a project of Eco Synagogue, and we recommend that anybody who wishes to plant trees for their community, um, for whatever reason, does so through JTree because it's the communal response, the Jewish communal response, and it plants in, um, in, in areas of uh, where they've been researched. I don't generally work on JTree, but Angelina does. And she's got terrible sore throat, so I'm going to read out what she has asked me to say. Um, so J Tree Global was conceived following a report by Professor Grauver, endorsed by the United Nations in the summer of 2019, on how many trillion trees were needed. I'll say that again: trillion trees were needed worldwide, and critically, where they were needed. It was launched at Tubishvat 2020, just before lockdown in the UK and in the United Synagogue. And it is led here by Jonathan Drury, author of Around the World in 80 Trees, um, Rabbi Wittenberg and others, and in the US by Chazon and Dr. Ace Levine. So J Tree is a collective Jewish response to the climate emergency to plant trees and protect forests. Trees sustain all life and store carbon. Scientists believe that planting trees is the most effective way to limit climate change. And the UK alone needs 50 million more trees. Our partners. So our planting projects must be ecologically and ethically sound and must be for the benefit of the community. And they're researched really very carefully. J Tree's partners are balanced between the UK and abroad, and they've been chosen for their integrity and effectiveness in sustainable tree planting, working with people such as the Woodland Trust, Seed Madagascar, International Tree Foundation, who works with communities in Africa and the UK to carry out sustainable community forestry projects. So J Tree is a separate but partnership project to Eco Synagogue and it enables those communities taking the environmental audit to improve their environmental credentials through conservation, planting, and community engagement. So JTree enables the Jewish community to collectively add to the total trees planted, either through individual or community donations for simchas and other special events. So one I know of recently, there was a bar mitzvah and the bar mitzvah family planted a tree for every um, one of the friends of the bar mitzvah that was there. So trees sustain all life. They absorb carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen, as I'm sure everybody here knows better than me. Scientists believe that planting trees is the most effective way to limit climate change. 
and the UK alone needs, as I said before, 50 million more trees. So we can do so by donating, by gifting trees on special occasions, by compensating for unavoidable travel or carbon emissions from our home car or workplace, and by planting trees um, with our own hands. So the whole tree planting uh, through JTree, if you donate through JTree, you can be assured that each tree planted is in exactly the right place for the right purpose and is the right tree. And that's why we would commend to everybody looking to do some tree planting to do it through JTree. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that that presentation and if you go to the site there are wonderful there are a wonderful range of pictures of what people are doing and have done we're going to conclude um, with the uh, with uh, words from the newest rabbi to join the eco synagogue rabbinic team rabbi jeffrey berger and i just really appreciate your participation in our work in which you've been involved in different ways for a long time rabbi berger thank you rabbi wittenberg and thank you to uh, to the entire eco synagogue team for the opportunity both to give the summary and the vote of thanks and also for welcoming me uh, so warmly onto the board. Um, in offering a summary of tonight's vote of thanks, I would highlight the following recurring key points. It is wonderful that through Eco Synagogue and our partnership with the Board of Deputies, we have one focus across Anglo Jewry. We are delighted by the early spade work which has been carried out by the various communities represented here this evening, as well as the announcement this week of the new Dorot program. By sharing our ideas about best practice, we make it possible for communities both large and small, affiliated or unaffiliated, as well as for each of us as individuals to significantly mark where we are in this process and what lies ahead. It pleases me to think of the application of the verse from Psalms chapter 133, a song of ascents of David, behold how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. That's my first observation. The second observation is that with the Institute of Jewish Policy Research Survey, we have benchmarked where we are as a Jewish community in this significantly cha challenging period of human history. And therefore we can begin to build a calendar of events and milestones for the kinds of projects to be implemented in the coming months. My third observation, which echoes as though, uh, it, it echoes the thought, excuse me, of the late chief rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs to me, is that tonight's program in the eco Synagogue project creates a Judaism for each of us that is relevant and engaged, deeply engaged with the world. We may have a long road ahead of us, but this evening, and forgive the pun, we have firmly planted our flag and raised the issue of climate change to the top of our communal agenda. So please stay tuned, as Rabbi Wittenberg said, for more events and updates to follow from Eco Synagogue. Like a long distance marathon, I believe we need to cooperate across denominations because just as the pandemic did not discriminate by differentiating, differentiating between Jews of one uh, flavor or another, uh, or for that matter, between Jews and people of, of the world, neither will climate change. Uh, and so we are keenly aware of our interdependence in issues impacting all of humanity. Um, let me close by sincerely thanking all of our speakers. I won't do that by name, uh, but you had the opportunity to, to hear all of them, uh, to thank uh, the representative from the Board of Deputies and from uh, World Jewish Relief uh, and from Deloitte. Uh, and uh, um, this, is, this is one of the reasons why I shouldn't name everyone by name. Um, uh, and of course, from the movement of reform Judaism, everyone who participated uh, in the panel discussion that was so aptly uh, and dynamically led by Rabbi uh, Wittenberg, uh, let me also especially uh, thank Andrea and Angelina uh, on the Eco Synagogue team who organized, organized tonight's program. And most of all, 
I want to thank you, the esteemed audience of nearly 100 people uh, who joined us this evening. I want to wish you all a very joyous Tu Bishvat. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Berger. Thank you, and wishing everybody a good Tu a joyous Tu Bishvat. And if you get your chance to get your hands in the soil, there are lots of local planting schemes around. Um, that will be... That would be that would be wonderful. Erev Tov to everybody. We're going to analyze the chat. We're going to take out the questions. We're going to do our best to take them really seriously. And um, we hope this evening has been an impetus to everybody to be to increase our activism and climate consciousness. Laila Tov. And